um, you know, our URL could use some work for the YouTube channel, right? It's not great, but it turns out there's a lot of demand for organizations that have OL in their name, it turns out. So um, why don't we start with some introductions? Uh, it'd be great to know kind of your name, um, your organization, if you don't mind, and what brings you to the meeting today. I uh, know what we normally do is go from the host's view left to right. So, um, so that means Pavel. Hello, Sorry. I'm Pavel. I'm software engineer at Get Data and an Open Lineage contributor. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Uh, Peter, welcome. Hello, my name is Peter. Uh, I work uh, as a contractor for Manta, and uh, we are exploring uh, you know, the possibilities how to integrate various uh, lineage producers with Manta using Open Lineage format. Welcome. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I think we've been corresponding. So yeah. um, great to have you. Uh, Ross. Hey, I'm uh, Ross. I'm on the DevRel team here at Astronomer, and I'm uh, here today to talk about docs and uh, generally in the community, I, I'm here to help. Thanks. Uh, Harrell. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm new to the Astronomer team. I'm uh, engineering lead on the observability products at Astronomer. Really curious to see what people are doing with open lineage and, and get to know this community a little better. Welcome. Um, next up is Maciej. Hey, I'm Maciej. I'm a software engineer at Getting Data, and I have a presentation about custom extractors today. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Thanks for coming. Um, next up, Michael Collado. Hey, uh, I'm a staff software engineer at Astronomer, uh, and I'm an open lineage contributor and a contributor to Marquez as well. Thanks. Uh, Willie? Uh, yeah, hello, everyone. I'm Willie. I'm the co creator of Marquez, um, open lineage committer. I work at Astronomer uh, on the observability team, and I'm here to actually to see Maciej's presentation. I'm so excited. Custom extractor is it's long overdue yeah, for a demo, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mandy. Hi, everybody. I'm Mandy Chessel. I'm the lead for the Ajiria project. And so we've got quite an extensive integration with Open Lineage, uh, which, uh, um, which I created. So that's my interest. I think uh, all the things that you do is, are, are wonderful. So uh, yeah, I, I, I love listening to your presentations. Wow, thank you. Um, it's great to have you as always. Uh, Minkyu. Hi, uh, I'm Minkyu, and I'm a software developer at Astronomer, part of the observability team. So I am also a contributor to Open Lineage and Marquez. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks. And uh, Sandeep. Yeah, hi everyone. Yeah, my name is Sandeep. Um, I'm product manager at AWS uh, based out of Palo Alto. Um, yeah, I'm responsible for the Glue Data Catalog like formation and uh, lineage and investigating the open lineage options for uh, AWS services. Wow, oh, uh, great to have you. Thank you. And um, is there anyone else that I, I kind of got lost in the view up here? So the, if, if I didn't, Call your name, please speak up. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm Michael. I coordinate these meetings. I'm uh, on the community team at Astronomer. Um, once again, nice to have you. And uh, if I mispronounce anyone's name today, please don't be shy. Uh, just correct me. Correct me about anything. Uh, I welcome corrections about anything. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the slide deck. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, just like to review quickly all our various channels here. If you're not aware, um, we do keep meeting notes. Uh, 
links to videos, uh, other stuff on our wiki. And um, I think the best way to connect with someone, if you have a question about the project, um, if you want to suggest a new feature, whatever, whatever, Slack, I think, is the best way. And if you um, have trouble connecting with us on Slack, uh, just reach out. Um, reach out to someone on GitHub, I guess, and um, we'll help you out. Um, today, what do we have on tap? Um, got a doc site update from Ross. I'm going to re be reviewing a couple of the, uh, well, the recent releases. We have two, 11.0 and 12.0. Um, and then we've got a presentation from Mache about extractors. We're going to uh, learn about how to write a custom extractor, I think. Uh, and then open discussion. And that's that's a great opportunity, especially if you're a new, um, new visitor. Um, and uh, if you're new to the project, if you want to ask a question. Um, so, Ross, uh, how about I stop sharing and let you take over? Sounds good. All right, I want to make sure Mache has a lot of time because this is a really awesome topic. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. Uh, to update everybody on the status of this, uh, as of our last meeting um, a month ago, I did the typical community thing. I made an empty doc site and I went to this meeting and I went, everybody, please, let's make a doc site and work together and like help. And wow, everybody came through. So since then, there's been um, 19 closed pull requests. Uh, we've had doc contributions from Mache. We have doc contributions from Howard Yu um, from Astronomer. A lot of doc contributions there. A good great expectations doc from Benji, a uh, Denim Alpalka. Um, we had, um, I did a bunch of stuff as well. Uh, Pavel did a bunch of work as well. Uh, and um, uh, who am I missing here? Um, I don't know who Finil is, but um, this person also, we've had a lot of really good work. The current state of the docs are that I think the information architecture is really becoming robust. There's a lot of good sections in here and there's a lot of really fantastic content, but we're not quite ready to launch it yet. Uh, as of now, it exists at openlineage.io slash docs, but it's not complete. And so it's not linked into the Open Lineage website. It's not linked into GitHub. And I think that we need to do a few things to get it across the line so that we can link it in. And those things have been captured as issues in the Open Lineage docs repo. I've marked them all with launch item. So this is the list of stuff that I think we need to do. Uh, basically, the About Open Lineage page, um, I think we can do something awesome here that really sells the purpose of Open Lineage a bit better than what's here. Uh, I think the getting started could be refactored a little bit, but it's probably okay how it is. Most of the work needs to be done here in the object model section. There's good information in here, but I wouldn't say if we took a step back that it is a complete story about any of these topics. So that's kind of what I think we need to do next is get these uh, these hammered out and the about open lineage thing. There's also this integrations landing page where we have a matrix of integrations and systems and mechanisms. And I, I just wrote this, this isn't complete. So we need to actually make this complete and correct. Uh, and then there's a landing page for developing with open lineage. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's actually fine. So anyway, there's a good selection of issues here. I'm gonna try to take a lot of these on myself. And my stretch goal is that by the time we have this conversation next month, we have a doc site that's up and it's linked and I can start reporting on how much traffic it's getting. So that's my stretch goal for next month. Um, but so mostly, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody who did doc work. It is so cool to see these docs come in. And I just know this is gonna be a tremendous good, tremendously good resource. So thank you. And if anybody wants to take on any of these remaining issues, uh, you are absolutely welcome to do so. And there we go. I. I'll yield my remaining time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for that contribution, Ross. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, any questions for Ross? Uh, no questions, but I was going to offer to help with writing up the, the proxy backend and the Jira integration. I was actually... I, I was gonna I was gonna mention that, but I didn't want to call you out. <laughs> but I, <don't> appreciate, <laughs> no, I'm I think those talks would be so great to have. Like that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what do I do? Do I just go straight to the site and start and 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 do a pull request, or do you want to have? Yeah, just do that. Pull, okay. Pull requests are fine, and it's um it's the docs repo in the Open Lineage organization, and um there's there's also uh, you know uh, not to belabor the point too much, but there's this integration section here. Um, 
there's this interesting situation where a lot of the current open lineage integrations are in the open lineage repo, but that that may not always be the case, and they may not always be open source integrations. Anyway, there's a section here where we can talk about integrations with all kinds of products and systems and frameworks and platforms, and maybe there should be an Nigeria page. Um, so I, I think there's there's an opportunity to like talk about all the work we've done. So yeah, yeah, I, I okay. Yeah, I, I will look at it. And if I have any questions, I know who to ask. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mandy. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. So next up on our agenda is review of recent releases. So we've had two since the last meeting. Um, yeah, if you can't see my screen correctly, let me know. Um, so starting off with 11.0, um, we've added some key features here. We've got an HTTP option to override timeout and properly close connections. That's in the Java library. Uh, thank you, Matt Shea. And um, as far as I know, Microsoft actually asked for that. Um, we also added DMT support to the Airflow integration that was new in Airflow uh, 2.3.0, I believe, DMT, uh, which allows for tasks running in parallel. We're just making sure that Open Lineage covers that as well. Um, we added a SQL extractor to the Airflow integration. Uh, as I understand, that was primarily refactoring. Thank you, Jakob, for that. Hey, Michael, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're, still, we're seeing your recent releases slide. Is there a slide with the details? Thank you so much. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, I appreciate that. Yeah, this should make a little bit more sense now. <laughs> okay. Um, last edition here in 11.0, we added a uh, bug checker called PMD to the Java and Spark builds in Circle CI. And that's part of our process with the LFAI and Data Foundation, that incubator program. And we're making progress there and wanted to meet that requirement. In addition to having the help of a bug checker, right? Um, changes in 11.0, uh, when testing uh, extractors in Airflow, we now set the extractor length assertion dynamically. This is a change to testing, of course, from Benji. And uh, now we render templates at the start of integration tests for the task listener in the Airflow integration. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mache, another improvement to our testing. Um, so, uh, next release to cover is 12.0. Uh, this was a big one. A um, few uh, key additions to talk about. Um, we added support for Spark 3.3. Uh, it's from Pavel. Thank you for that. And we added the Apache Flink integration. Uh, thank you so much, Mache, for that. Um, we added the ability to extend the uh, column level lineage mechanism. Thank you again, Pavel. Also added a standard way to expose errors with the error message run facet. Thank you, Matt Shea, for that. Um, thanks to uh, Benji for the SQL check extractors contribution. This is uh, something that might be familiar to those who, who know the great uh, expectations integration. This shows whether the checks have worked. It's a data quality check, um, as I understand it. We um, also added uh, support for Redshift in the Airflow integration. That's those Redshift extractors. Um, thank you, Jakob, for that contribution. We added a data set builder for alter table command, number 927. This is in the Spark integration. We added lineage coverage there. Thank you, Tomas, for that. Um, in changes here, we have uh, a first contribution from Fonal. Um, so welcome, Fonal. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, this was a change to the Airflow integration. Lots of commits here. Um, we allow uh, lineage metadata to flow through inlets and outlets. It's kind of a manual integration of lineage. Um, and last but not least, um, in the Spark integration, we can now limit Delta events, which solves the problem of many unwanted events being reported due to an internal mechanism. 
um, in Spark. So thanks to all the contributors who made these uh, big impactful releases possible. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Maciej. Hey, so uh, first thing, uh, Pavel also uh, was one who worked hard on the Flink integration, so I want to thank him uh, for this also. Let me share my screen. Does it work? Can you see it? Yep. Yep. Good. Yes, we do. Uh, so, so uh, basically, the way Airflow works is that you have uh, defined tasks uh, in into a you know, directed essay in graph, and the tasks are composed of. Uh, basically pieces of code that can execute whatever you want and they're called operators and you know you can there are hundreds even more maybe operators written in airflow uh, even more people are writing their own operators uh, to you know do some custom stuff interact with their own internal services and so on uh, so previously i've talked uh, how we integrate with Airflow proper, uh, how we added interface to Airflow to basically get in a way to extract the data. Now I, I want to tell how we extract this particular piece of data that actually tell us what the lineage is uh, in more detail. So we have an example of an operator here that you know connects to some database or maybe reuses existing connection and just executes some SQL on the uh, on the database. So if we have something like this, uh, we have a concept called extractors that are just pieces of code that get this uh, operator as their uh, you know, initial argument and then expose few methods that uh, extractor author can provide, have, have to provide to make it work. Uh, first is that we need to know what actual operator are you working on. So the class method get operator class names basically returns the names of the operators that this extractor will be uh, executed on. So you know we don't work with uh, you know Spark extractor on your Python operator. And the second one is the one that actually does all of the work, uh, which is extract. And you can do whatever you want here. Basically, you have access to the operator object, which is the actual, you know, uh, executed piece of piece of code uh, in the um, in the in the object, and it's up to you to process it in the way that extracts this information. Uh, so here, I you know, I, we have a SQL. I can parse the SQL using parser, and then you know, format it to to fit the piece of data that we want to have. Uh, but you know, this is not all. Uh, some operators have some like runtime information that exists only after the, uh, the actual work has been done. And we have a way to, uh, to capture it. Basically, uh, we, there is an additional method, extract and complete. Uh, that allows you to access the data after it's as, access the operator after it has been completed. So the extract method is actually executed before the actual execution happens, and extract on complete extracts the data on complete uh, and allows you to access more runtime info. Uh, so here, here there is some runtime info that the operator provided, and we can utilize it to enrich it to provide some. For example, uh, some facets like data quality facets, uh, some runtime facets, uh, and some 
operators like BigQuery operate, BigQuery extractor, use this mechanism to provide information about how many rows were affected uh, during the query execution. And I think the same happens for Redshift, for, uh, for Snowflake probably, uh, I don't remember exactly. So how does this metadata look that you have to extract? Basically, it matches the structure of, uh, of the uh, open lineage event, but it's kind of flatter, right? Uh, and the uh, operator can process an amount of inputs, outputs, and amount of outputs. And it can provide some additional runtime and, and job facets. Uh, for example, the SQL that we capture is actually a property of a SQL job facet. So there is a way to basically uh, add any information that you want to the actual emitted open image event. And uh, this is not ever everything that would be emitted. Uh, rest of the integration also provides some uh, facets. For example, we attach Airflow, uh, Airflow version facet that reports the version of the Airflow uh, despite uh, what you provide here, right? As in, in as a, just a like, standard feature, not related to Extractor. So how do we actually, you know, we've written some code, uh, we return this task metadata class. Uh, what do we need to do to expose the uh, the extractor itself, right? So basically you have to set up an uh, environment variable that provides full path to your extractor class. Then in runtime, we will import it and you know basically utilize the get, uh, get operator class names method to define uh, whether we should use it uh, when we parse the duck. So you can you know, add one extractor, add multiple extractor. And as you see, it's uh, separating them by comma. It's not very pretty when you have a lot of extractors, as you can see in the second example. So the third example, which is something that I think we haven't released yet, or maybe released it in the latest release only, uh, you can just you know, use this syntax to separate them uh, with uh, new lines. As, as I think it's standard YAML feature, uh, this type of this type of stuff. Uh, and sorry, something is calling my door. This is an environment variable, correct? The open range extractors; those are environment variables. Yes. Yes, that's right. Okay. So the, that's interesting. So the annotation on the bottom, you could still set that. So you, you said that's for YAML. Mm. Could you repeat? I haven't heard the beginning. Oh, I was just asking, these are environment variables that you yes. set and the library looks up. Where would you set the one on the bottom? Uh, is, is it still valid? As, uh, for example, if you have a YAML file that you know describes something then then it's the feature that you can use i i didn't know that before this is something that uh, provided lately after you know uh, as a github issue you know uh, somebody created github issue and we added this i see so uh, it's like if you have like a helm chart and you're setting yes. the environment variables you'd be able to use that okay sorry again Either way, I think I snuck in my question. So we're, we're good. Yeah, um, Machu is very popular this evening. Happy for him. Yeah. Should be good now. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, this is basically how we register them. And what can you use? So you, you don't have to write everything always uh, from the scratch. We provide a SQL parser. So if you do a job that utilizes SQL, you basically can use it and have Linux for free in, in runtime just by utilizing this. Uh, second, we have a common library, some uh, few systems that we cover. Uh, 
this is mostly for use for other actually like if you wanted to integrate with something else because most of them are already used to provide standard extractors but there are some methods that you could use from them and third is you know community help uh, slack github issues uh, you don't have to write always custom extractors right you can contribute them to open lineage and we would be very happy if you did that with you know a lot of popular extractors that's not yet covered so uh, it would be great if you contribute something. If not, then you know you can ask for help. Uh, and you know this is not everything. Uh, it can fail to work, right? What's the like typical problem? You know, uh, if if you provide wrong path, we can't import it. And this is actually hard to debug, right? Because this is like a non-type string that you will paste somewhere in your configuration, and uh, it's often hard to spot something like this and from our side uh it's not very easy to provide good information about this and i think this is the one of the fields that we need to improve uh you know providing more debugging information if you do something like this uh, not sure how this would look but maybe maybe an additional like facet or maybe just just logging, maybe something else. Uh, that's you know, if you have an idea, then feel free to share it somewhere. Uh, second problem is using imports from Airflow. So you know, you usually when developing something like that, you can freely import whatever you want, but it's not the case for extractors because you are uh, we are getting imported like in the middle of Airflow import path. And the way Python works is that it prevents import cycles. So Airflow is in the middle of importing some stuff on its own. It imports our stuff, then goes back to importing the rest of the Airflow. And if you do something like this, so import the DAG, then write your class, it basically creates cycle with, with Airflow's own imports. So you, your extractor will fail and uh you know you will notice that plugin import failed in your uh in your airflow ui so the way to basically uh, work around that is use local imports uh, and if you use type checking as we do then use the typing type checking uh variable and using that, you can have you know uh, have your types recognized by MyPy and probably other typing uh, libraries tools, uh, and also not get in the way of Airflow's own imports. So, what's the future for uh, extractors? First, this debuggability, and I think I spelled it wrong, but it's not a very easy word. Uh, second is more more of a way to cover something else uh, as I think Python operator is the most popular operator. Uh, and it, it support for it, it's not great right now because you can execute arbitrary code. And Airflow is working on AAP44, which is a proposal for having a data aware uh, having airflow more data aware so uh if if airflow adds something like this then we will be very will be uh, you know covering it very soon to utilize this feature to provide uh to provide more coverage and third is something that might not be done this is something that we have been um, thinking about uh, for a long time is if you're using python operator with hooks then we probably could extract some info about that but it's not very easy because in contrast to you know operators the hooks don't have an uniform interface so there are arbitrary methods that you can use their provider and uh, like that the clean uh, interface is not there it would be more messy and providing something like custom hook extractor uh, would also be not very easy to do and yeah that's it. Uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so uh, going back to you, uh, Mike. Clearly, you did just an amazingly thorough job of explaining the extractor writing process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Oh, and um, one more thing. This is uh, this is uh, if you want to know more or just read the same thing that I just told. It's uh, in you know the new doc page. So feel free to look there if you uh, if you want to know more. Yeah, great, great presentation. Um, it, it also does it, it does it link out to the extractors that you define in the uh, Airflow library? Because sometimes it's really good just to see examples on, on the extractors that we currently have. Yes, that that's a good uh, no, comment. I, we need to add links to some of the. Um, cleaner extractors because you know some of them are uh, not that um, pretty to to see because for example uh, one example one good example is i think snowflake which renamed some methods in hooks so we have to work around that and there are kind of things in in non custom extractors that don't make them very easy to parse visually uh, what happens there Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, we have one more item on the agenda. And, uh, let's see here. That is open discussion. And this is a great opportunity, especially for those who are new to the community to uh, ask questions, get feedback from uh, project leaders announce uh you know uh, an upcoming contribution what have you got a small announcement that i'm presenting on um both ageria and open lineage at the open source summit in dublin on the 15th of september cool yeah Is that virtual? Would we yep. anyone be able to listen in? Uh, it is no, it's a face to face meeting, mm -hmm. but I think they do they do video it. So, um, I don't know, hopefully they make it available to anybody afterwards. So, um, if I can get a link, um, I'll let you see it. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pass it on. Okay. I wonder, maybe, maybe. Um... Maybe there aren't enough of these. Uh, I'm giving a talk at ApacheCon November in New Orleans about uh, data lineage and open lineage as well. I wonder if there's enough of them to put them somewhere. You know, like have a have a calendar. Uh, you know, I think I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, Mandy, if you yeah, when you have that link. Love to see it in Slack if you don't mind, and that's a great, mm -hmm. yeah, point of contact for the community. Just to repeat, um, that's kind of where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Ah. Thank you. Uh, I also want to remind that we released Think Integration, and we're looking for feedback because it's in a very experimental state. So uh, if you use Think, you know, uh, feel free to spend some time and. Let us know if it solves any of your problems. Yeah. Well, I've got one other thing. It's not directly related to open lineage, but it's something that we're doing in the Algeria community, which might be of interest um, for the open lineage community um, in the future. So we're actually running um, a one day hackathon as part of the open source day for the Grace Hopper celebration, which is a massive conference, half online, um, half in person in Orlando. Uh, and it's designed to um, encourage uh, young women into technology. So we'll spend a day um, uh, helping people um, learn how to do an open source contribution. So we've created a, a library of issues um, that, they, that people can come and work on. And then we'll be there on Zoom to uh, 
uh, to, to help them with the contribution. So uh, it just seems a really nice way to hopefully get some new contributors, but most importantly, getting more people comfortable with contributing to open source. That's so, very cool. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so we're officially a featured project and that means they do quite a lot of publicity for the project. So if um, you want to apply next year, if you think you can get to 30 features that somebody who's quite new to the project. Um, so what we're doing is get, we're building a demo um, with lots of little programs that contribute different types of metadata to Ageria all around sustainability. So it's, um, we have a fictitious company and um, they're doing a sustainability drive. So they're interested in knowing where they're, you know, documenting where their factories are and um, how much power they're using and all that sort of thing. Uh, and they'll use Ageria to do it. So, if you, um, and hopefully that will mean that there's sort of a common theme to what everybody's doing. And it means that we can create nice, simple pieces of work to start with. So maybe there's something that to do with open lineage that is, around a theme of you know where you need to build these pipelines from different technologies and and have um the uh, attendees build build a sort of big demo i don't know just thinking off the top of my head that makes sense absolutely that sounds exciting mm -hmm. yeah and maybe we could get a head start to next year's one um do we just go on Grace Hopper's site or what's the best? Uh, yeah, Anita Borg. Yeah, yes. If you go to, hmm. to, to the Anita Borg site, uh, you'll see Open Source Day. And um, yeah, it's actually what I can do is hopefully you can access this because it's a, um, a, an AI, a, 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 you know, a Linux Foundation and uh, website. Let me just click uh, get the link for you. This is our description of what we're doing. <laughs> uh, so you can see, and it's got the links to their sites as well. So, um, so we're doing that on the 16th. So my presentation to the Open Source Summit is uh, um, on, there we are, that's, that's the link of our description, um, is on the 15th and then on the 16th, we're doing this, uh, the Open Source Day. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, um, the open source day is entirely virtual, so um, <laughs> you're very welcome to join and then help, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't have to be in person. Uh, so I think actually we'll be most of us will be in Dublin when we when we we're running this session. So, um, but uh, uh, it's it's, um, it's it's actually from a project point of view, it's been very valuable because uh, we basically walk through what would a company do if they were using Ageria for sustainability. And uh, we found um, enhancements that we can do to Ageria, better, better places where we need to improve our documentation. Um, and we're building test cases that match the work that these um, the contributors will do. So uh, hopefully we'll have flushed out most of the bugs before they try and, <laughs> well, before they try and use it. Um, so on the whole, I mean, from a project point of view, it's been, uh, it's, it's a very valuable exercise. Um, I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm correct about this, but I believe I remember that Astronomer is also involved in the Grace Hopper. Oh, fantastic. Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be, I, I think, I think that's the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, very, very cool. Uh, thank you. Um, any other announcements, questions? Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, hope to see you next month um, and uh, stay in touch. Uh, looking forward to it. Thanks again for coming. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Good meeting. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.